Over the last few days, there's been plenty of shots fired by myself as regards to Indiana Jake and the dialysis of destiny. So what about if we try and fix the film? If I was given carte blanche to make Indiana Jones 5, with Indiana Jones being the same age that he is now and having to incorporate that into the movie, how would I do it? Well, here's just a few ideas. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now, first and foremost, there is going to be a huge difference between the way that I tackle this and the way that Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy tackle this because my aim would be to entertain the audience. Whereas we've seen what Kathleen Kennedy's was when that absolute dross was released at cinemas last week. So let's incorporate one of the ideas that they actually put into the film, that being that Dr. Henry Jones Jr., a.k.a. Indiana Jones, is actually retiring as a college professor. However, my college professor would be a successful college professor, somebody with a decent house, Marion as his wife at home, and somebody who is sad to go, and his pupils are sad to see him go as much as his colleagues are. But as sad as that is, he's also very excited because he gets to spend the rest of his days now carefree with the love of his life, his beautiful wife, Marion Ravenwood. And this is something she too is looking forward to. God damn it. But just as we think they're going to settle down to a wonderful suburban life together, there is a knock at the door and the door opens and a bag, a military bag, gets thrown inside and in walks Mutt, their son, who's returning back from his tours in Vietnam. Only Mutt now looks very much like Chris Pratt. I guess the army and a heck of a lot of protein did wonders for that boy. Marion and Indy are thrilled to see the return of their son safe and sound from the horrors of war, and Mutt himself is happy to be back home with his parents, although his duty in the army has now come to an end and he must adapt to civilian life and all the complexities that that might bring for him the man after all has grown up a lot after everything that he's seen and been through it's not much but indiana jones uses his connections to get mutt a job at the university where he catalogues the artifacts and makes sure that things are clean. You can maybe even add some security work on top of that to make sure that they're safe and give him a little bit more agency about him. It's not much, but it's honest work for an honest guy now. One day while Mutt is patrolling around the university grounds at night, he sees a torchlight flickering in one of the rooms, the artifacts room. Hmm, it looks like we have somebody who's broken in. So he very carefully and quietly negotiates his way where he sees the figure of somebody hunched over one of the open containers desperately searching for an object. When he tries to apprehend them by placing his hand on their shoulder, he's taken completely unawares as they spin around and spin a leg right into his, well, you know what, Ooh, taking him right off guard. He then makes and grabs for the assailant, but they manage to slip from his grasp. This person is wary and quick nimble and also know how to fight he manages to grab the guy and drag him to the floor after a bit of a fun scuffle within the room where he shines the torchlight on his face and we're revealed short round with ki hoon kwan reprising his role as indy's former child sidekick he professes his innocence that he needs desperately to find something and calls out for Dr. Jones. And Mutt, of course, not knowing who Short Round is, says, that's my dad. And he decides to take him home to Indy and Marion. 
thrilled to be reunited with his old sidekick. He's welcomed with open arms into the Joneses' house, where they sit down at a table, eat good food, reminisce about good times, and then Indy asks what he was doing. Short round jogs Indiana Jones's memory about a package that he sent to him many years ago. A package in which he said in the letter that was attached is very important and not to be opened at any cost to be kept until Short Round could himself come into person to collect it. And even though Indiana Jones and all of his adventures lead to his incredible curiosity, he also is incredibly loyal to his sidekick and has kept the parcel safe. Not at the university though, in a chest in the house where he keeps all his most private and precious possessions. Precious not necessarily in monetary value, but precious to him. Trinkets of his father who's now passed. Trinkets from Marion and his time and his little adventures with her, and maybe some others for other adventures that we never got to understand or appreciate. The whole crew, Indiana, Marion, Mutt, and Short Round, all go to the attic where he opens up the chest and takes out the package. Short Round opens it up to reveal half of the Antikythera. How do you actually pronounce that word properly? The Antikythera! I think that sounded quite, you know, like I knew how to say it first time. Indiana Jones recognizes it immediately with Mutt being the one asking the questions, which gives the audience, of course, the exposition that we need. How did you acquire it? Why is it in your possession? And where's the other half? Indy inquires to Short Round, and Short Round says, The other half is with his father, and his father's been kidnapped by... Not Nazi. Definitely not Nazis. With this being set in 1969, with the space race coming to an end, with America winning it, and with the direction that I would personally take this film, which we'll get to very shortly indeed, we have the juxtaposition of the Americans high up in the sky in space, and we also have the Russians. The other part of that Cold War combination, who, even though they were in competition for the space race, have actually been funneling a lot of their resources into what's been going on under the sea. Now, Short Round is, of course, an orphan, so this would be his adoptive father. Somebody who took Short Round under his wing because he too had an appreciation of archaeology and possibly the supernatural. And so he tutored Short Round from that young boy who Indiana Jones could not look after any further at some point in time and developed him into the man that he is now. And both of them together had gone on an adventure where they discovered the Antikythera. Each of them taking a portion to make sure that it didn't fall into the wrong hands. But now the Russians have him and Short Round needs help from the crew. Marion says she can't. She's too old for this now. It's a life gone past. And Indy, well, he's itching, but he wants to stand by his wife and also agrees that he's a bit too old now. So Mutt steps forward saying, I'll help. But you see, somebody else is gonna prod Indiana Jones. And Marion turns to her husband and says, I know what you said was to be here with me. But Indiana Jones, I can see that you've got one more adventure left in you, and you can't let your son, who's just come back home, go out there on his own. Who's going to look after him? Something which Chris Pratt's mutt might take a little bit of umbrage with, but he understands what she's trying to do. So with the blessing of his wife, Indiana Jones, Mutt Williams, and Short Round... Go on one final adventure to save Short Round's adopted father and retrieve the second part of the Antikythera. And what adventure might that just open up for them?
Their adventures take them to Greece, the last location of Short Round's adoptive father. And they go through shenanigans and adventures, which can obviously be filmed in, as the Russians realize that they have people on their tail. This leads them to the discovery of Short Round's father. And as they save him and drag him away from the Russians' clutches, which of course reveals our main antagonist in the film, Rusky Dusky, what a name, it is revealed that Short Round's adoptive father is none other than Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan, who turns 70 next year, I think, and Indiana Jones, who's meant to be canonically 70 in the film, the guys have much to relate to. We have two fathers and their two sons, however estranged or whatever they may be. And with the two parts of the Antikythera now put together, they realize that this is a device which takes you or gives you the location I should really really be specific about to Atlantis. So with the two parts together and with another adventure and mystery to be solved, Indiana Jones, of course, cannot resist this. They must see if Atlantis is real. They must see if this device truly does give the location of this lost, mysterious, potentially mythical city. Rusky Dusky is hot on the heels of these aging archaeologists and their sons, and they make attempts to get the Antikythera off of them and reveal to them the location of Atlantis and all those technological wonders that are presumed to have resided within. But hijinks entails and the group manages to get away and with the help of Salah who meets them on the Egyptian coast they manage to get themselves a submarine and chart themselves a course for Atlantis but with the Russians in hot pursuit to everybody's amazement to these aging archaeologists they discover atlantis it is revealed to them in all of its fallen glory a majestic city under the sea that's been untouched for thousands of years and they can see incredible structures that must have once existed and the technology to create them they don't understand how on earth they could have done this but that is the wonderful mystery of atlantis they even discover that some of the areas are watertight sealed sealed that they are able to actually dock a submarine and disembark into a portion of the city itself. It appears that its inhabitants might have actually understood that their city was not going to stand the test of time above water for too much longer and created these vast passageways that when the city sank or was consumed by water, they would be able to survive and hopefully thrive. Alas, it looks like the civilization didn't manage to survive too much further after its consumption into the water. However, they find remains of who did live here in a very dignified way. Their bodies, or what's left of them, sat down on chairs or resting on what looks like furniture. This wasn't a civilization that died in a manic way. This is a civilization that died with its head held up high and the rumblings, the earthquakes are rattling the city. And then there's an even bigger rumbling as the Russian submarine also docks and disembarks into Atlantis. The Russians are here to claim the technology of Atlantis and Indiana Jones and his friends are just obstacles in their path. However, the aging archaeologist and the rest decide that they must do everything in their power to repel the Russians. We have both Short Round and Jackie Chan as his adoptive father using some great uh, kung fu, karate, all that sort of business. Whereas... Indiana Jones and Mutt are very much brute force using their punches and throws to fight. However, the combination of their fight and the earthquakes that are trembling around 
suddenly cause a cataclysm in Atlantis, making it sink further down into the ground as everything starts falling upon them and the water starts thrusting itself inside. Our heroes, though, manage to defeat the Ruskies, get rid of Ruskidusky, and get out into their submarine in time as the Russians and Atlantis fall deeper into the sea. Indiana Jones can only marvel at what he's just witnessed and what he's just seen, even if it was for just a short period of time. Who knows what technology would have been discovered there had the Russians not been so headstrong, but at the same time, the secrets of Atlantis once again remain secret. The heroes return home. Marion thrilled to see the safe return of her husband. Mutt happy that he didn't fall into that sedentary life and managed to go out and feel that love that he had once upon a time for adventuring. Jackie Chan as Short Round's adoptive father and Short Round managed to reconnect. And as the two ailing archaeologists start to discuss shop chris pratt's mutt and short round seem to just drift away from them discussing other things other potential adventures other things and mysteries and secrets that have been hinted at they can't be true can they maybe they should go find out and two guys wander off in search of another adventure while they're in the prime of their lives now, yes, this is something that I just threw together in literally an hour or so of thinking about it. But I just wanted to put something conceptually out there. Something which wouldn't have made Indy look weak and old and pathetic. No, something which should have appealed to his adventuring nature while still understanding that he was of a certain age and also had the responsibility of having a wife as well the return of mutt alive fit healthy and well not quite understanding his place in this new world after leaving vietnam but at the same time having an appreciation of family an appreciation of of life and discovering that with short round coming together with Indy once again since the temple of doom and giving him a little bit more story and giving him the happy ending of also discovering a parent in Jackie Chan and who doesn't want Jackie Chan in an adventure movie do an adventure shit with opening of course the possibility for Mutt Williams and short round to start going on their own adventures together. That way, Indiana Jones gets his happy retirement. And that way, maybe an audience can have a franchise that goes forward instead of backwards. I don't know what you're going to think about it. You might hate it. It's all good. It's an idea. One that I personally think is better than anything that Lucasfilm put out there. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.